Thanks. I needed that. Uh, whose side do you take in the Kevin Smith's feud with Bruce Willis? What's the feud specifically? Um, oh, they made Cop Out. Yeah. yeah. And Bruce Willis was annoyed at Kevin Smith because he didn't seem to understand any of the technical aspects of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And that annoyed Bruce Willis. That's understandable. And so Bruce yeah. Willis then kind of phoned in his performance and yeah. led to a lot of tension on the set, which caused Kevin Smith to... Uh, uh, he, he told the whole story about it. and Yeah. I You know, I'm going to side... Like, I, I don't give a shit about either of them. I'm, I don't want to side with either of them because yeah. Bruce Willis seems to not give a shit about anything he's in ever anymore. And Kevin Smith is kind of technically inept. He owns, <laughs> he owns up to it, but he's still... I, I think what like in that story he tells about Bruce Willis when Bruce Willis is like you've been making movies for how many years and you never learned your lenses, I think Bruce Willis has a point. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna lean a little more towards Bruce Willis, but I, I don't. I think they're both kind of shitty. At this, <laughs> I, I, what we can agree on is both of them were acting unprofessional. Yeah, and I think it's pretty shitty of Kevin Smith to make like a whole. To try and, like, make himself look like the victim right. by telling this whole story about it. Like, oh, Bruce Willis was mean to me. Yeah. It's like, maybe you deserved it. Maybe you should learn how to fucking direct or hire someone who can learn that shit for you. That's what Well, he does. That's his yeah. cinematographer. Right. Did all that stuff for him. But it's still, like, you should know these things. At, at least enough to, to, you know, know what to ask for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. I'm with you. Anonymous says, <clears throat> oh, sorry, uh, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven, except Rich Evans. Yeah. Sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Jay? What? You're presuming any of you are going to heaven. That's Come the, on. They, they said the thing. I said the thing. Jay, is Dune a great David Lynch movie or the greatest David Lynch movie? Didn't we just talk about this shit? Dune? I'm you still... people all got to stop showing up two hours late. I'm still catching up, man. Still catching up with tips. Dune, great David Lynch movie or the greatest David Lynch movie is the question. No. Great. <laughs> Isn't Kyle MacLachlan in that? Mm hmm Yeah. Sting is in that. Lots of people are in it. Gotta see this movie. Yeah. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you should do what I do and start watching it and then give up 20 minutes in. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times now. <laughs> I love that, David Lynch. I gotta give this movie another shot. No. No. Uh, are you looking forward to M. Night Shyamalan's upcoming Unbreakable sequel, Shared Universe, that he's working on completing? God, I hope not. Um... I I, ugh. I mean I have a different opinion of him now after Split because oh, I like Split so sure. much. Maybe I need to see Split first. So I am kind of open to it, but how are you not dead? He has only made one good movie in the last fifteen years, so it's his quite possible it's a fluke. His track record's not. His track record's not the best. I do love Unbreakable. That's actually my favorite movie of his. Unbreakable's a great movie. Yeah. Unbreakable. But the thing that makes. <laughs> It's a miracle! It's a miracle! <laughs> Them females are strong <laughs> as hell! <laughs> the, the thing that makes Unbreakable kind of remarkable in its own right is it is, as intended, the first act of a superhero movie stretched out through an entire movie. Yeah. So the idea of him now uh, presumably making the second act an entire movie doesn't really sit right with me because that was the whole idea is like we don't get the massive payoff of the cape and the crime caper like it's just this small little simple thing yeah and there's something similar in split where i don't want to give away spoilers because you haven't seen it don't give away spoilers. i still uh, so I, it, I will give no spoilers but there's something similar in split where there's a revelation uh at the end of the movie where if there's no payoff to it in a future movie I am a-okay with that. Hmm, it's okay. a great revelation mm -hmm. that kind of recontextualizes the whole movie, but if there's no follow-up on it in any other movies, I, I, that's fine. It works as just a little moment. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's all I can say without giving anything don't, away. Don't, ooh, it's it's well, tricky. I'm to, starting to get excited to see Split. It's, Shit. It's, 
It doesn't have a a, a a twist in the traditional sense of like, like obviously Sixth Sense. If it didn't have the twist that it has, it would not be as interesting of a movie. Mm. Like the twist kind of makes the movie. Uh, Split. If it did not, and I don't even want to call it a twist. I'll just call it a, a, a revelation of more information. Yeah. If it did not have that, the movie would still function great as a movie. Oh, but it, it, but it adds this other element to it that makes you go back and look at the movie in a different light. Mm. So. I need uh, more health files, Jack. I am fucking Dragon. Yes, this is a PlayStation exclusive game. This is only on the PlayStation 4. Oh, I'm excited. My local theater. I might. I. I think I just need to take a day off of work <laughs> because they're playing both Split and La La Land. Like, oh. Ooh, I want to see both of those. <laughs> Honey, take the kids. I gotta see. No, I gotta see it for. Uh, we're doing a thing. It's, it's, I'll, I'll tell them we're gonna make a video about it. Go see La La Land if you want to take a nap. Oh, you be quiet. <laughs> Beautiful people singing songs. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Until they forget that the movie's a musical for a good. 45 minutes to oh, an hour. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, damn. I get, well, all I'm saying is if, if Lisa asks you about a video we made about Split and La La Land, just go along with it. Okay, because we'll I might, do. I might have to... No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, hey, Jack and Rich and Jay. Love, hear, love hearing Jack talk about the DC TV shows. Oh, yes, my garbage shows. I love my garbage shows. Do you think all the shows have been great this season? Even Arrow? P.S. Caught the feels when Supergirl's sister caught the gay. <laughs> the Supergirl has been... Since they've moved to CW, Supergirl has been spot-fucking-on. They've changed the tone. They've gotten rid of uh, Villain of the Week stuff. They, they've lightened it up. Superman was a great addition. So we can say that the networks just suck. Uh, CBS did not know how to handle the property. Yeah. But. Um, and Arrow's been pretty good. And, uh, Flash is good. I don't watch Legends of Tomorrow. I haven't. You know what? And I, I'm, I'm behind. I, I haven't seen most of the new stuff of Arrow and Flash. But, uh, but yeah, so far so good. I like it all. I like it all. CBS, CBS is for old people, and I've heard really good things about Legends of Tomorrow. I know, like they did a whole episode about George Lucas. Yeah. Like they had to say, like they had to go back in time, and like. There was a ripple in time, so George Lucas never made movies or something, so they had to convince him to make movies, and they ended up, like, making Star Wars disappear or something, which, yeah. which set back scientists who wanted to do space travel or, you know, like, some <laughs> some sort of reasons. So, like, they're get Legends of Tomorrow is getting super schlock, which is great. Which is great. And, no, I haven't seen Riverdale. Have you heard about Riverdale? I'm assuming it has something to do with Archie. It's Archie. Yeah. Sexy Archie. Okay. The comics started doing Sexy Archie, didn't they? Did they? They they dropped, like, the ultra cartoony style. Or maybe at least... Maybe it's, like, the Ultimate Universe version of Archie, and they still do normal Archie? I don't know. I think they still do normal Archie. But this is Sexy Archie. They did Zombie Archie. Did, no, did I'm, they? Yeah. <laughs> After Life with Archie. Rather than Life with Archie. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, well, and that's, that's it's an it. ongoing thing too. It wasn't like a one-off. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, they have sexy Archie now, which I haven't seen. Riverdale. Oh, I've heard a little bit about that. Sexy Archie. <laughs> Rich is getting a phone Rich call. Rich is leaving. Rich is done. But, uh, <laughs> so, I, yeah, I haven't seen Riverdale. I'll, Rich got too upset about talking about Riverdale. Oh, oh yeah, it's really getting under his skin. <laughs> it, like, to me, though, that's one of those concepts that is a sketch. Yes. Like, turning Archie... Sexy Archie? Sexy Archie is, is a comedy sketch. Yeah, absolutely. Probably is somewhere already. <laughs> but I've seen clips because... I've just it. seen a couple, like, promo images. Yeah. I haven't seen any clips of it. Oh, like, well, because I, I watch all the shows on the CW app. 
Oh, and so, okay. like, a lot, a lot of times they'll show, like, and, and you know, like, oh, Josie and the Pussycats are back, but they're all sexy and they're rapping. Mm. I go, oh, no. <laughs> I, I, just, I just don't care. Yeah. No, I, should you? I used to read Archie comics. Like, that was uh, that was my first foray into comics because those are the only comics my mom would buy. Well, that's because they're wholesome. Right. But now even that's been sullied. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And I think they did they did Betty and Veronica making out on episode one. <laughs> of course. Like just, of course they did. Just kick down that door. <laughs> We're not gonna dance around this. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Who asked for this? No one. Who wants this? No one wants this. Kids don't know who Archie is. They're not gonna watch it. Right. For name recognition. Right. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, to to the question about the the flash, or I saw in the chat someone was talking about the flash and how his power gets old after a while, and it really does. He can run fast, and so every single season, his main nemesis is just a guy who can run a little bit faster. <laughs> that's no that's no joke. That's no exaggeration. <laughs> it's on like season four now, and every single season is just a guy who can run faster. Oh God. And it's super lame. <laughs> but the, the the guy who plays Barry Allen is fun. They have fun with the show. They do corny stuff. It's There's some good. Hmm. There's some good in the Flash show. Okay. So I'll stand by it. Though, yeah, it's just, you got to run a little bit faster, Barry. <laughs> oh, no, you ran too fast. You broke the timeline again. <laughs> so what do they do in the comic books? You probably don't know. What do they what do they do with Wally West after they brought back Barry Allen? Splash for twenty three years and they just Yeah out of here. Goodbye. I have no idea. And were the fans who have been reading The Flash since they killed off Barry Allen, were they upset that the character they'd been following as the Flash for twenty three years was kicked out? Well, maybe he's still the maybe he he's still the Flash somewhere, I don't know. I have I, I I just I don't care about the Flash except for in the Dark CW show. Don't either. I'm just right. curious about that. Flash. And I'm sure the Flash awesome. feature film will be amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's gonna suck so bad. No, no, no. DC has their shit together. It'll yeah, be they fine. They absolutely have their. Everything shit together. they do is, they is very well director? planned out. What? Didn't they lose like a third director now? A something like that. Wally West disappeared from the timeline after the new 52. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. Poor Wally West. Wally West went back to his home planet. <laughs> he never existed. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what they did in the new 52. Just people literally never existed. Oh. It's not like their their story came to an end. Well, that's one way to deal with, uh, <laughs> yep. with continuity. Yep. Just pretend it never happened. Burn all your old comics, kids. <laughs> These aren't Grandpa's comics anymore. Don't you love following DC Comics? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Fla No, Snyder's not directing Flash. He's executive. He, he, maybe he'll end up directing it. We got no one else. No one wants to work with us because we keep fucking everything up. <laughs> he's executive producing everything. Like, he's in charge of the universe. He's oh, the... God, uh, how, how embarrassing is that? He's the Kevin Feige of the DC Cinematic Universe. Ugh, that makes my skin crawl. Right? And it's like, you hear stories about like how Feiji got to where he is in Marvel, and it's like, oh, he's just a super fan, and you know, he, he worked for the producer of the X-Men movies, and he just knew so much nerd stuff that they kept <laughs> using him. Good you for know? him. Right? And he had this like deep love and respect for all for like everything Marvel. Yeah. And he became the head of Marvel Studios. And it's like great. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. And, and say what you want about the Marvel movies, some are better than others, but they clearly uh, are, are trying yep. to do the right thing with the characters and the properties and all that. Zack Snyder has openly stated that he doesn't like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> he has not minced word and says I think Superman's a dumb character. <laughs> like. But hey, give give him the universe. Yeah. See yeah. what see what you can make of it. God damn it. Zack Snyder has openly said that every like creative decision he makes is to try and make something look cool. Yeah. I remember years ago trying to listen to the Watchmen commentary track, and that was oh, God. everything he said was was because he thought it looked cool.
But, you know, really, we just have a, a, a bias. That's true. It's That's just true. a bias. It's not because one company is, is you know... Idiot, an idiot? <laughs> yeah, one company is <laughs> clearly doing uh, good work, or at least trying to, and the other is just like a clusterfuck constantly. Superman can be a great character. If Superman is done right, yes. He yeah. Can, he can yeah. be a great character. He can even be interesting, even though he is an immortal being of unlimited power. Yeah, you put him in the right story. Because I personally don't have much interest in Superman, but I've seen some Superman, you know, the first Superman movie I like. Oh, And sure. I don't really care about Superman. It's, it, like, Superman is so simple. All you need to do is make him care about other people and put those other people in harm. There you go. That's it. Yeah. And then Superman is a relatable character who wants to help everyone. Right. Boom. It's just, it's not rocket science. Ooh, you might have enough to level up. Ooh. We are. We're horrible Marvel shills. You're right. <laughs> horrible, horrible Marvel shills. I'm actually really thankful for the DC clusterfuck cinematic universe. Yeah? It's just, just from an entertainment standpoint. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> they just continue to fuck up over and over and over. It's amazing. It's almost as if they are trying to. Yeah, yeah. it's it's like uh, like watching a train wreck. <laughs> You just can't look away. <laughs> uh, Thardicus, uh, many tips left. We're still getting through them. Uh, much like this from Zach Snyder. of the Axis. Stop making fun of me, guys. Hey, guys, uh, I, my think my movies movies pretty, cool. I think my movies are super cool. Uh, also, I've been working out. Have you seen my muscles? <laughs> uh, I'm doing the Batman CrossFit routine. Uh, actually, I showed Ben Affleck how to do that routine. Uh, I can lift a bigger tire than Batman. <laughs> Uh, no big deal. Uh, no, Zach of the Axis says, Roses are red, violets are blue. Bought you guys Artemis Bridge Simulator five months ago. Let's get you to simulate a Star Trek mission with friends. Poems are hard. <laughs> but I'm, you're not going to get Mike on stream. I don't care how many bridge <laughs> simulators you send us. <laughs> Uh, Jack says anonymous. Tell Rich to do whatever he wants, and tell the chat to shut their smiley, smelly faces. Why? We're ha we're having a good chat tonight. Everything's fine tonight so far. No one's being mean yet. Uh, don't go over to the YouTube comments right now because we made fun of anime earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> I have not uh, moderated the comments yet, and I'm not looking forward to that when I get home. But just ignore them. Just don't read them anymore, and then everything's fine. Well, I like, sometimes they use bad words that I don't like them using. So That's I when you I, filter those out. You can do that, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I have an auto filter, but then uh, it still gives you, like, these, like, maybe this is a bad uh, one. Sure. You know, those, yeah. those guys. Oh, I have plenty of words on auto filter. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, YouTube. All right, Dr. Gunter Hunterhanger says, I'm hungry, be right back. Chunky Baloney says, Jay, <laughs> the wheel of the worst with Miss Utterly. You edited her face, cutting to Rich and Colin, and it's so perfectly executed, I laugh every time. Oh, good. Do you play with editing for a while, or do you just imagine it and make it? Um, like for example, like just that that comedic timing of Mrs. Utterly to Rich and Rich and Colin. Yeah. Did you? Like, that, oh, I mean, no. that wasn't. That's just one of those things when you're going through the timeline and you're editing stuff. You mm -hmm. just kind of start experimenting. Sure. Most of, it's very rare when you see a specific edit in your mind before you're actually doing it. Hmm. Especially something like Best of the Worst, where <laughs> you know the conversation is spontaneous. Oh sure. So sure. Like, I, I know there there are several times where I will play with the timing of a joke. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, sometimes it's like if I think it's a funny joke, I want a little more room to breathe afterwards. Or you want the pause before the punchline. Like, oh, just Oh, a, yeah, you tweak that a stuff. A couple frames more, yeah. Yeah. But so you just, you kind of saw that moment as you were editing. You didn't envision that. Right, yeah. And that's, that's the case with a lot of our editing. Mm-hmm. 
It just sort of happens. It just sort of happens. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and then you refine as you go. Yeah. Great. Hey, that was a little little behind the scenes. A little behind the scenes treat right there. <laughs> Tired and Sad says, you may have already discussed this, but what are your guys' thoughts on Ben Affleck not directing the Batman? It's hilarious. It's 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 so beautiful. In, in, in the case of that movie, it's actually kind of disappointing because I would like to see <laughs> another good Batman movie. Right. In regards to the that is, is just a emblematic of the entire DC Cinematic Universe. It's hilarious, though. Mm-hmm. It could have been an opportunity to do an actual good Batman movie. I've liked Batman movies, but Batman is usually the weakest part of yep. the Batman movies. <laughs> Pretty much every Batman movie. Well, and at some point, you just have to... Who is making these decisions? Like, yeah. who let Ben Affleck go? Yeah, how do you fuck that up? He was he was a good Batman. He's an accomplished writer and director. Academy Award winning. Who? <laughs> how? How do you? How fuck did that you up? not lock him down? <laughs> That's your only job as a producer is to lock people down. Yeah. <laughs> what do you need? What do you need, Affleck? You need money? We got money. We're WB. We got we got literally nothing but money. <laughs> they won't for long. <laughs> <laughs> Keep making the decisions they're making. <laughs> as long as those damn movies keep making money. No, keep making money. Uh, no fear, no ever. He says, sorry for another Jay have you tip. <laughs> but Jay. That's my entire Twitter feed, by the way. Yeah. The ats. It's just, have you have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Sometimes it's nice. They love you. I guess. It's worse when they say, like, what do you think about this? Or it's like, oh, I got to fit a response and a Twitter reply. So that's why I just ignore everything all the time. <laughs> every, every couple days I might read the top couple tweets and my, maybe I'll respond. I think that just makes you sane. <laughs> I don't get too wrapped up in Twitter. No, that's probably that's probably a good call. Anyway, what? Um, have you read the book Devil's Candy? No. About Bonfire of the Vanities. Oh no, I haven't. Shit. But you've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's like a notorious uh, uh, disaster. The making of that movie. Oh, okay. But no, I have not read it. Yeah. Well, there you go. So it's called Devil's Candy about bonfire. I do recommend though movies. the the De Palma documentary. It's just called De Palma. De it's very very good. Why am I stuck there? What was I stuck on? I'm stuck on oh, <laughs> horse shit. <laughs> All right, let's see. Renegade Akira says, hey, guys, my local theater is doing a fan festival showing older movies. Which one should I see? Oh, this looks like a tough... Okay, you can only see one movie. Fargo, Fight Club, Groundhog Day, Jurassic Park, Pulp Fiction, Starship Troopers, or Princess Bride? Fight Club. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fight Club. Hmm. We'll read those again? I'm thinking more from the perspective of, like, what is the best movie to see with a big audience. Right. Uh, Fargo. Fight. Oh, I thought it was, like, one movie. You, you have to forget the other movies exist. What's oh, no, 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 no. no. If you're going to a film and you only get to see oh, one movie at this festival, which playing one do you at a see? Film festival. Oh, that's a different question. Uh, Fargo, Fight Club, Groundhog Day, Jurassic Park, Pulp Fiction, Starship Troopers, Princess Bride. I think as far as just general audience reaction goes, yeah. I would go with Starship Troopers. Ooh. If you're just looking for a great theatrical experience where I'm sure people will be like laughing and yelling and having a good time, <laughs> Starship Troopers is the movie. Ooh. Not the best movie of that lot by far, but, but possibly the best to see with the crowd. Possibly the best to see with the crowd, yeah. You know? Maybe Pulp Fiction a close second. Ooh, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I like your thinking. Starship Troopers, I think, is a great choice. Yeah. Any opportunity to see Jurassic Park on a big screen again is where I would go. Um, it's fucking Jurassic Park.